Welcome to volume two of our Grasshopper tutorial. So this volume will be focused on data trees uh, and uh, how powerful they are uh, once you learn how to use them. And we recognize that data trees are part of the most confusing uh, aspects of Grasshopper. So we'll be diving into them and explaining why they're so valuable for parametric modeling. So I have Grasshopper open on my right and Rhino on the left and we have the sample file that should be included with this video. For those of you who followed along in volume one, I have taken all the work that we did there and I simplified it down so that we could still use what we built in the first section without being confused by all of that stuff that we had. So as a quick review and to showcase what we've done here, I brought all the features that we might want to use to the left here. So in the very beginning we build our little rectangle to create the surface. These two clusters here have um, our attractor points uh, and subdivision uh, bits. So here we subdivide the uh, surface into the number of panels that we want. We then have the ability to switch back and forth between, say, a point attractor curve, or attractor point manipulation, or the attractor curve. So in the end, we have the subdivided surface and the attractor value. Then we're remapping the attractor value. So we have full access over adjusting that if you'd like. Keep it set to four. And then once we have that remapped value, that uh, takes the attractor value into something uh, that is more directly meaningful, we use that result to offset the panels into these inner rectangle. Um, so uh, window sections. And then we create our uh, mullion or solid wall panels while maintaining the outer panel curves.